So welcome to this session and welcome to the uh, CAM, I mean the uh, online conference. And today I will be speaking about modern, I mean, how to embrace the modern web using headless CMSs with Gatsby AS. So, I mean, feel free to, I mean, ask any questions about this and let's keep moving. So my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas, but you can find me as J-M-O-L-I-V-A-S in most of the social network places. I mean, as you can see, my Twitter handle is J-M-O-L-I-V-A-S, same for Drupal.org and um, GitHub and all the different places. I am the co-founder of Octahedroid, so we are a professional services and consulting agency. So we specialize in, in implementations of modern front-end tools, uh, cloud-native architectures, automation, and CMS integration. When I'm talking about CMS integration, it's mostly like headless CMSs. We do a lot of work with Drupal and WordPress and, and other like headless CMSs. Okay, well, let's talk about just a little about the agenda we're going to have today. And since we are going to talk, talk about like modern embracing, like, you know, modern front end development, we just want to also talk about how this started. So we're going to talk about, it. I mean, web development 101. I will also mention a few things about Jamstack. We'll also talk about Drupal, WordPress, and headless CMS. Uh, if time allows, I will show you a demo about, I mean, a Gazi project with different backends, in this case, different headless CMSs, uh, Drupal, WordPress, and um, Airtable. I mean, Airtable probably is not a CMS, but can use as a backend and exposing data for your front end application. And I will also mention some things about GraphQ, GraphQL and Gatsby AES in the end. So let's start with the uh, 101. I don't know how many of you are being developing for more than a couple of years, but I mean, I've been here for, for so long. And I remember back in the day when, when I was starting developing, developing uh, websites, what we just have, it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. No other than that. And, and you know, those days were, I mean, were easy to build sites because, I mean, every single site was static. You know, you just go to your IDE of your preferences, either Dreamweaver or front page or Veeam or whatever, in editing files there, you know, all those files were stored in your local machine. You make changes on those files. I mean, again, you use editing those using your preferred text editor or IDE, make changes, save those changes locally, and then push those changes to your server. In that case, I mean, maybe some of you were using FTP or for the more advanced people using SFTP. And I recall back in the day, I mean, tools like like Dreamweaver allowed you to, from the IDE or the you know, or the text editor. I mean, how you want to name it, allowed you to, from there, you know, save changes and and FTP to your to your server, kind of like deploying your site directly from your local machine, right? I mean, that's that's how I recall web development back in the day. I mean, again, the web was more simple. And the the whole process of publishing pages were were more, I mean, the workflow were more simple. But you know, as the time keeps passing and, and client keep, I mean, start to asking for more advanced features. You know, like you know, I want to manage this site. I want to manage. I want just want to manage content on my site. CMSs appear on the uh, on the market. And CMSs allow clients to, to manage content on their site by using this um, application, this web application. 
And that was good because they were allowed, to, your clients were allowed to make changes. They don't need to, they don't need to ask you to make changes or they don't, they don't need to learn, you know, either CSS, HTML, or JavaScript. So they just log into a CMS system and, and got a chance to update their site. But once that start happening, you know, a new more complex workflow, I mean, appear, and not only workflow, way more advanced, even a stack. I mean, it was required because back in the day when everything was HTML, CSS, everything was static, where you just push your changes and you only required to have a web server to, to provide your files. I mean, I mean, to your website visitor, but in this case, when you move to a more a CMS approach, things change and now you need to have in a stack and it means you're required to have, you know, I, I mean, a web server, or that web server required to have a database and that, that changed a little. So whenever someone visit your site, something like this happened, you know, let's say you have a visitor up in the browser in, in their computer or their mobile mobile device and then ask for your page then you know your web server knows what what needs to do right to get the uh, that request and then it connects to the to the web application in this case let's might be mentioned might be drupal or might be wordpress or might be something else and that web application requires to connect to your database engine and then you know that to running a few queries here and there return you the data and then your cms again it needs to it needs to like you know create this page and output the proper html to render the page and now the server have your page already i mean ready and send it back to the client so again you know the difference with the static side as we just have in the past it's you know we have more com more complex in here Obviously, we can serve more advanced pages. And this is the traditional stack. So this happens something like this, you know, every single time, every single time that a client requires you to a page, then your server is the one, you know, resolving everything on the server side of things, you know, server side rendering. So all of the processing is happening on the server. And that was for, I mean, that's still, I mean, that's still the, the um the common practice but this is you know the server was the one to doing most of the processing um might be a downside here i don't want to say downside. but maybe you know it's something that is happening here for every single request your server i mean every single client request your server should like you know communicate to the back end you know going to the database asking for the data building your pages and yes i mean as as websites start getting more complex we saw there, I mean, I mean, a lot of tools were allowing you to, or I mean, saving us from going to the back end, you know, and hitting the database. I mean, we can implement different caching layer, you know, there's varnish, there's there's a lot of different layers based, I mean, caching layers based on the, or even tools based on the language you are using. So far, again, if you don't have any, the, the most basic stuff, if you don't have a caching layer, Obviously, again, your server is the one who processes or do all the pro most of the processing, right? And then the client, you just receive the page to render that on the device that your visitor is using for loading your page. And then maybe you remember, I mean, four or five years in the past, something called SPA or single page application show up. You know, the difference I mean, while using SPA versus the uh, the traditional, I mean, monolithic server side rendering approach, is that in this particular case, your client, I mean, a or your visitor using a client, in this case a browser, go to your site or go to your server, and then your server it only return a, you know, JSON representation of the data. And then, you know, the client in this particular case, the browser or the mobile phone, I mean, either on the computer or on the mobile phone, he, the mobile phone takes care of, you know, all doing most of the processing, right? So it takes care of, of rendering all the, I mean, all the data and turning that data into, into pages. So most of the templating systems are running client side, 
and we only use the backend for fetching data and interviewing at that particular event or that particular moment when we request the data. You know, the server, I mean, it, it needs to connect to the database engine to pull the data and return that JSON representation of the objects we are requesting for. But again, so far, we move most of the processing to client side, which, I mean, it works great, provide you a better experience as a visitor, but it also provide you more, more, uh, more processing from the device that is visiting your site. And as your site or as your SPAs are getting more complex, you know, your, your device require more, more, more power to process your site. In this case, it's also consuming more, more, more power, more resources from it, and then it's draining the battery. Then we can talk, now let's talk about a, mo a modern stack, something called, I mean, Jamstack. And what, it's, what is what happened in this particular case? So now we're seeing, I mean, another way of, of working with, with, with websites. What is ha what's happening when we use the Jamstack approach? What is happening is when a visitor asks for a page on your site, there's not even a web server. I mean, there's a, I mean, a CDN that is exposing your files and, your, and all your files that are static. So what is happening, it's whenever a new visitor or a new client loads your page, a CDN responds with, the, uh, with that particular page and the page is returned immediately to the, to the browser of your visitor. And whenever there is a need for a more advanced processing, then you have an, an, an call to an API, which is basically in that particular case, some, a server-side processing, and that API could be a dedicated server or you know a, a cloud function or server or such. Okay. And this is where we get how we get to Jamstack. And you know, Jamstack, it's a you can define Jamstack as you know JavaScript APIs and markup. So all you know trying to translate it, this into more like you know regular development, all the request response, you know, lifecycle happen client side or happen on JavaScript. And most of the backend functionalities move to APIs. And again, all of the markup is already pre-rendered or previewed. And what is the difference between the, the traditional approach and the SPA approach? The difference is all of the, uh, most of the processing of the markup, it just happened once on a build server on build time. So think about this. Whenever you need to build a new version of your page, you have a, this build server who run the build of your page in this particular moment that happens only once, not for every single visit. You know, the build server asks to your backend for the data, render most of most of what I mean, most of your pages, and then finally again serve you with them probably with an all of your most of your most of the content of your pages already previewed. We still have some server processing here, right? Because we need to serve the page or we need to have an API call. But as you can see, we are reducing the, the, the time we require server here. And then same thing for client. Since all of the markup, markup was already prevailed by the build server, then you don't need that much time or that much power or that much processing on the client side of things. And what would be the benefit of going this Jamstack approach? Well, you have a sites, I mean, you have better performance, you have sites that, that sites are, are more reliable and more secure and the thing turns immediately way more, more, more cheaper because you know, our, those sites are more easier to host. And this is an example why, why a Jamstack site, site is more secure is because you are not exposing a web server, you are not exposing a, I mean, a language like, like PHP or Ruby or, or whatever, you are not exposing a, a database to your, to the public. I mean, I mean, to the public, you, you can, you can do that. You can, you are only exposing a static file. So your site is, is already prevailed and you're only exposing all those static files. Which examples we have of traditional monolithic CMSs we've been working in the past for so long? You know, Drupal, it's WordPress, there is Joomla, and there are some others in this case. Let's focus on those two. 
Okay, now let's go real, real quick to what is the content management system of CMS. Well, as we mentioned, you know, when the applications start getting more complex, clients start asking for a more advanced way to manage web content, you know, for having multiple people contributing to the sites, create or edit or publish content. So a CMS is a tool or an application that allows us to do this. And why we should do, why we should use Drupal or WordPress, I mean, for, I mean, as a, as a monolithic CMS or as a headless CMS. Well, and we might have some currency legacy sites. Maybe you work for a university or for government and you already have a lot of sites using those technologies. I mean, those both tools have a battle tested and well-known graphical interface. So your user are used to, your users like that workflow and your users like to enter data in those systems. And obviously for the reasons we mentioned before, because they can, they can manage, I mean, their users and their content and they love their workflow capabilities provided by those tools. What if what if we want to use a headless CMS or those tools that headless CMS? Okay, let's let's talk about this. But first, what what it is a headless CMS? Okay, we can define a headless CMS as a backend only content management system. So basically, use your CMS only as a content provider and as, as a tool that allows you to access your content via a RESTful or GraphQL API for display. So it means we are removing the rendering engine from your CMS and not using, in this case, either TPLs or a twig for rendering the data. So we are, it means we are no longer using the presentation layer of your CMS. In this case, we are talking about removing that presentation layer because WordPress and, and, and Drupal already, I mean, are previewed with that render layer, but there are some other tools in the market that they don't even provide you that rendering layer. They only provide you the, the backend, I mean, in the uh, data entry, I mean, forms and the uh, API, I mean, for exposing that data. And once, once you start moving in this direction, you will see there's a lot of like, you know, J, in this case, like Drupal has this JSON API or WordPress has this REST endpoint, but, more and more, you might be listening about GraphQL, GraphQL, which is when what is what is GraphQL? We can define GraphQL as a query language and data, data manipulation language for your APIs. Think about it as a as the way to interface from the client side, your client, I mean your backend data. And what will be a good reason for using GraphQL? Well, allow you to centralize data, allow you to easy explore your data. So and big benefit of, of GraphQL, it's, 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 I mean, it's heavily typed. So you, once you start typing this on the GraphQL IDE, I mean, I mean, you can explore properties. I mean, you can explore definition of your entities. Again, you don't need to know your backend. You can ask your, you can ask to GraphQL, which properties this entity or this object, I mean, contains, which type of those properties, I mean, which type of this, of each one of those properties is defined. So it's it's easy to explore. It's easy to asking things for it. And well, it's it's um, it's more team friendly for front end and back end. And you can use as a single source source of truth. It means you can use the same GraphQL endpoint for build time, for server side rendering, and for client side code, and provide you a, a better developer experience and and a consistent and shareable you know workflow. And talking about GraphQL, what we can have for what we have for for Drupal and WordPress. Well, both tools, you know, and Drupal and WordPress provide you a GraphQL, I mean, endpoint. And out of the box, Drupal provide you with JSON API. Out of the box, WordPress provide you with REST endpoints. But as contrib in the contributor space, we have GraphQL pro I mean, GraphQL project in this case, GraphQL module for Drupal, GraphQL plugin for WordPress that allow you to expose the, your data via GraphQL endpoint. And now come to the very last part of this before jumping into the demo. Okay, now we are, we, well, as I was mentioning, we've been using WordPress and Drupal for so long, all users like those projects. We want to keep using those projects, but we might be want to introduce something different for the rendering part. 
So we are happy by using those CMSs. Our clients are happy using the CMS. But we want to provide a better, you know, front-end experience. We want to build like more modern from I mean, websites. We want to build a more modern, you know, approach. We use a more modern approach for building the uh, the sites, you know, the front-end sites. So we can use Gatsby. And we can define Gatsby as an open source framework based on React. You know, it's this is that our official description. And you know, Gatsby is a free and open source framework based on React that helps developers building blazing fast website applications. Um, the funny thing of with Gatsby is back in the day, I remember when they when they start the project, it's they start like marketing as a um, a static site generator. But in the end, it's not the final result you get by using Gatsby is not in a static site. And and how is it happening? You know, because in the end, Gatsby is a node application that allows you to push fetch data from different places and and run a build process that will take care of creating all the markup for your site for all your pages. So it means all of your pages will be rendered. So you will be able to get that final result and and publish to a CDN. So something like this. Okay. So it means you have a node process or React app running. You know, in this could connect to different sources of data, either a Drupal GraphQL endpoint and or a GraphQL WordPress endpoint or you know an arbitrary GraphQL endpoint. Or maybe you know you want to connect to Airtable to fetch in data. Whatever. You can use whatever I mean source of data. Then Gatsby take care of fetching data from all the different places. It also, I mean, allows you to fetch data from the file system, you know, either like JSON files, YAML files, CSV files, you know, you name it. There is a, you know, the same thing as, as there is a module for that in Drupal. I mean, there is a plugin for that on, on, on the Gatsby web, on the Gatsby ecosystem. And, you know, this build process, again, takes care of fetching data from all the different places. And, it's, I mean, return you, returning you a, um, an S, you know, in React application, which somehow is a, it's an static representation of your site, but that application, it is also a React app. So it means you can take advantage of the React lifecycle and keep fetching data client side, keep hitting endpoints, and you know, put more data from the same GraphQL endpoint if you want to, or from different APIs, and then rehydrate your components. Just, it means you can ask for more data on client side and make that data available on your application. And you can, I mean, keep adding dynamically more data to your page. And talking about how Gatsby works, Gatsby provides you out of the box with certain functionality, but it's easy to extend. You can extend by using plugins. In this case, plugins allow you to add external data or content allow you to customize the GraphQL schema. So it means you don't have to only use what your GraphQL schema is providing you. You can make changes on that build process. I mean, whenever you're receiving data in particular format, you can transform that data in that format. You can might be receiving I mean, markdown and you can turn into HTML, or you can might be receiving a remote image and you can turn that into a local image that Gatsby can manipulate and provide with all of the benefits that does provide you with image manipulation. And again, anything that is a third party service, you can you can write a plugin or use one of those uh, plugins on the on the Gatsby ecosystem to to integrate on your page. Okay, now Gatsby has something called themes, and those themes allows you to either, you know, remember I told you about how Gatsby allowed you to fetch data from different sources. So think about this, maybe, you know, again, I work for the government or I work for, for education, or I just have a need for having like, you know, hundreds of sites and all of the sites should look alike. And regardless of the backend, I, I need to do that. Let's say I have, you know, I mean, you know, 200 sites of WordPress, another couple of hundred sites on, 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 on Drupal, but I just want to have the final result just look the same. So we can introduce something called Gatsby themes, and I can make, regardless of the backend, I can make those sites look exactly the same. So I can have a 
same look and feel for both as a final result after running Gatsby build. And without, I mean, without, I mean, depending on of the backend, you know, this could be a WordPress, this could be Drupal, or this could be an Airtable, or this could be a custom CMS. Or you can probably do the, the opposite approach. Maybe I want to have different sites that look alike, but not the same. Maybe I want to customize colors or some difference here and there. But I mean, both sites are being rendered from the same WordPress or the same Drupal in a distribution or the same WordPress multi-site. So I mean, I have this site or this Drupal multi-site or Drupal, you know, or WordPress multi-site containing like 10, 20, I mean, as many sites as you want to, and you want them to look alike, but with some differences in color. So you want to personalize those sites. So you can also use themes and themes. And this is done by something called shadowing, which is a way to customize themes on, on Drupal. What would be the benefits of using a theme in, in, in Gatsby, sorry? Well, themes are not only presentation, that are all that are also uh, take care of, I mean, of processing data. So it provides you with data layer, I mean, a data connection. So because it allows you to add plugins to it. So think about themes more as a distribution or profile other than only a presentation layer. And again, the benefits of using a theme is that those themes, I mean, or a theme, allow you to share code and configuration. Because as I was mentioning, you can add different plugins. So you can create a theme to, let's say, provide a connection with a backend like Drupal or WordPress. And, and, that's, and that's, that's what you can do. And you can even go further. You can have a theme, like a core theme, who provides all of your components, right? Then you have a, a WordPress theme extending that core theme who provide the, the WordPress connection, but it's using your core theme. So it's gonna look like, you know, like a regular, I mean, it will provide you with an output. Then you can have this other Drupal theme, which is also extending the main core theme. So it means the final result is gonna look like. So again, you can have like multiple themes extending, I mean, a core theme and those themes can share, you know, a set of components that you can have somewhere outside of the theme. So you can have those, I mean, your React component that you can share in a different application. Okay, and again, themes allow you to save you from, from duplicating code because you can reuse that code. And, you know, themes are extendable and, I mean, and easy to customize and make easy for you to update. So again, since you are extending, you know, your WordPress, WordPress theme and your Drupal theme from a core theme, you can use, update your core theme and you i mean obviously you know, add a new component or change colors or change configuration and the next time you update your wordpress team or your drupal team or even your in this case a uh, Airtable theme you will be updating that core dependency that the three of them have and i mean all the three of them will be automatically updated i mean well, i mean if we were so happy on the CMS world, you know, on the on the Drupal and the WordPress world, why we should even try this? Or why we should worry about this? I mean, going this route, you know, a more like modern front end approach, we can provide a better developer experience. I mean, we can either iterate faster, we can deliver better work. I mean, a big, big or huge benefit of using a decouple approach, you know, like a, a headless EMS, which is in this case, let's say again, WordPress or Drupal, which is built on PHP and, and you know, a separated separated system as, I mean, for taking care of the front end, I mean, application, it's the separation of concerns. It means we can have dedicated people working on the CMS side of things, you know, extending the CMS, I mean, extending the GraphQL, extending, you know, adding modules, whatever, on the on the CMS side of things. But you can have people working on the front end side of things, which doesn't have to, they don't require to know the back end. So whenever you have someone to build, I mean, require someone, a front end developer to work on, on either, I mean, WordPress theme or Drupal theme, they need to understand, you know, the, all the, uh, how the CMS work, because they need to understand, you know, what a post type is, they need to understand what a content type is. When you are using to separate system, 
it's easy for you to be at your GraphQL definition, expose data as you want to, and kind of, you know, separate and, and target what you need to target, you know, backend people, you, it's going to do backend work, front end people is going to do front work. And obviously, you can enjoy the power of the latest, I mean, and more modern technologies. In this case, it's React and some other tools. Some recommended tools we use a lot on, on our development is a, obviously, Jarn, Team UI for building or, or, or teams on, on, on Gatsby, and a storybook for exposing our components. And, and well, let's jump into the code and, and a little demo about what we have here. So what I'm gonna show you right now, it's a it's a site that it's have this little explanation that I just gave you. So let's go Jarn and WordPress develop. So what I'm doing here, I'm just running Gazi on my local machine. What is going to happen? This process is gonna start a I mean, a, it's running the node application, it's fetching data, it's connecting to a WordPress application. In this case, I am running the WordPress site locally. You'll see. You'll see, okay, this is happening. So I'm just gonna move my browser here. So before jumping in, into this, there's any questions? Or we can just, let questions by to the very end. Okay. So after running this process of, you know, this case, Jarn, WordPress develop, basically I'm running, you know, Gatsby develop command. I have this Gatsby site running. It's what I'm going to show you here. It's what I was talking about. You know, I, we have a core theme, which is six, which is reused on a WordPress theme, on a Drupal theme, and an Airtable theme. And the three of them are using the same core theme and the same React component. So the, the three sites are going to look the same or alike. And now let me go back to my, this is my WordPress site. So what I will do here right now, you know, and let's now change something in one of those sites. Let's change the image on this particular pose, you know. So again, Gatsby is taking care of creating those pages. So those pages are here, you know, like page two, page three, whatever. Let's go to page three and change this image because I don't like this image, right? So go to page three, edit. And let's change this image for something else, you know, media library. I think I'm going to use this little guy who's here. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to update here. And what's going to happen? It's going to happen. What should be happening is this should be it's not refreshing or it's not. Let me see. Did I, did I, I didn't save or? or Go back to here. Uh, just, I, don't know. I didn't change this. I don't know why. No, that changed. I just don't know why. But we'll see this on the on the Drupal site. And okay, I mean, I have connected the uh, the site with the. Let me take a look at this. Where's the plugins? So, mm, 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 mm. I think it's this one. This one should be, I think this one should be activated so we can see the change. Yeah, we don't have the proper plugin enabled. So we'll see those on the WordPress, on the Drupal side of things. So again, so what we have here is our WordPress site that is building this, this I mean, Gatsby site. We go back to post and try again. Let's see if that was the right plugin for doing the thing. And let's remove all this block, keep the update, and now update fails. So yeah, demos, live demos. Let's try now the, but in the end, what we got here, it's the, uh, you know, the, the Gatsby site built on the, uh, based on the WordPress site. So now let's move the Drupal site here. Let me go back to my, and I'm going to try, whoops. 
So now let's say Yarn Drupal develop. So what is happening here? And I'm starting my a new Gatsby site, which is again connected to this Drupal site. And that I have that I'm here running locally. And as you can see here, it's gonna look exactly the same. I mean, the only difference is it's, it's fetching data from the from a different backend. In this case, is fetching data from a Gatsby site. So it's done. So let's refresh the browser. And as you can see, it's exactly the same. So we're using the same components, you know. It's data is here, same one is here, Drupal is here. So now let's go back to the team. Drupal allows us to do the the um, you know the live preview. Go here. So let's go to the component area. So I know this is a text image. So what we are using for managing, you know, content in the particular case of um, Drupal, we are using, um, yeah, it's here. Yeah, live preview works. What we are using, we are using paragraph for the uh, for the, I mean, data composition. And as you can see, we have we have different components here, like quote, text area. We have let's think about this. You know, let's add a you know another a new quote here. You know, like something like Lauren Ipsum. And now you know, like you know, like bar who is gonna save this and it's gonna show up at the, at the at here as you can see it here. So again, we are using a paragraph approach for providing data. And in the in the particular case of WordPress, we are using Gutenberg. But you know, the big, the difference of the approach that we are using with Gutenberg is we are taking, exposing the data from Gutenberg as GraphQL, I mean, as GraphQL fragment. So in, we are extracting key values from it. So it's not like we are, I mean, rendering the whole HTML. But it's rendered, but it's generated by Gutenberg. But we are using it. We are extracting every single side of those blocks as fragments, and that's why on the uh, on the WordPress site and the Gatsby site, based on the WordPress backend that is, you know, that is maintained by by a Gutenberg blocks, we can manipulate the look and feel of every single element, right? So we can let. I mean, we can say select all these key as key values. And use our React components to render the, you know, the uh, the front end application. So now let's go back to the uh, to the CLI and spin up another. Let's say Jarn, dark, you know, dark developer. So let's say I want to have a dark team. So again, I want to reuse my core theme in my React components, but in this particular version of for this particular site, I just want to change color. So what I what I, we what what we can do is use Gatsby themes and take advantage of the shadowing functionality. And what is going to happen here? I'm just going to reload my page, and my site is going to go into dark mode, right? And as you can see here, it's exactly the same content. This one has the same content that we just added, and go back to here. You know, again, we are using the same theme. Now let's go back. Let's say maybe I just don't want to change the whole color. I just want to change a little thing, you know, like let use shadowing to change. Let's go back to the original color, but swap the menu. So instead of the menu and the title show in the, you know, title on the left, menu on the right, let's take advantage of shadowing and change not color, you know, change the layout of my theme. So it means it's not only like you can that you need or you can change colors, you can change layout, you can change anything on the on that particular theme that you are extending. So this is coming back. So again, theme, I mean title is here, menu is in the side, and you know everything is happening. But then what I just show you, it's a I mean a headless approach with um with WordPress and with Drupal. But what if I have a different system? What if I have my own custom CMS? Or what if I want to use, you know, Airtable for, for this part, for this particular, I mean, site? We can do that. So now, let me go back to my CLI and execute this, you know, Jarn Airtable. 
So what is going to happen here, you know, a new CASB site is going to spin up on my machine. This is using the Airtable theme, which is basically sharing the same, I mean, Airtable, I mean, sorry, the, the main uh, GASB theme. Mm. Let's take a look at the Airtable. So what is, we, the way we are managing, you know, this, the content here, it's by using Airtable. Airtable is a system, I mean, it's a, this page doesn't exist. It's a service. It's kind of like Google spreadsheet with crayons and really nice colors. And the nice thing about here is you can create like different tables and you can link those records. You can define you know, columns with particular types. I allow you to like building your own like database schema if you want to see it like this. But again, as you can see here, this site is built on Airtable. As we can see, post one, post two, post three, those are here. This same Airtable is the one taking care of giving us the URL, as you can see here is post one, post two, right? And let's, and you know, same thing. We're using those blocks here, you know? So let's say quote, so we are using this other table containing the quotes, kind of like, you know, like fragments or like paragraphs or like blocks from Gutenberg. And we can have our content managed via this, I mean, system or whichever system we want to use. And the final result will be exactly the same. Because again, what is happening here? So our GASB theme or Airtable GASB theme is extending our core theme, but the the starter or the or the same, or you know, or the main application, it's just extending the core theme. And on so let's say we have this core theme and we have this GASB Airtable theme. And all of the connection and data manipulation of Airtable is happening or Airtable GASB theme, similar to what we have with WordPress and Drupal. But again, the three of them are sharing the same main core theme. And this is how we can have a multiple sites that look exactly the same because the sites share the same React components, regardless of the backend they are using. Okay. And now I think we can go to the final section of the session. And this, I mean, Matt, might be you have any questions. So let's ask. And just before going into the thing, I have another session that I will be showing you how we implement, just to let you know, it's a case study, how we implement uh, Drupal into a Gob site. And what I will show you there is like a little more probably more advanced things about Drupal integration with Gatsby. We will see how to take advantage of the CMS, like really, really heavy, you know, like taking advantage of views and view modes and custom modules and different, different features of Drupal. We will really take advantage of Drupal as a backend in order to render a, uh, a Gatsby site, I mean, with, with React. Any questions? Um, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Great. Okay. Um, so I have uh, a question about um, blogs and other websites where there's a lot of support for filtering called for. Like if, let's say a person is allowed to filter by a category and a tag and a text search and do pagination at the same time, that kind of scenario. Um, would Gatsby try to like build out literally all the possible result pages and query strings, or is would that be a situation where you would need live React code as well, talking to a backend? The, well, you have if you require to have pagination. Well, yes and no. You can reveal all of the pages. I mean, on the build process, but I mean, all the pages will be statically rendered. What you can do here is you know render a you know your site let's think about this let's, and that i will show i will talk about this in more in deep in my in my next session so let's think about this we have drupal which is great for having uh, uh creating like queries using a graphical interface which is called views right so you can have that views connected to solar and get exposed using graphql client side so you can build you know your render your search page which is basically a you know, 95% of the markup is already pre-rendered and your search box will be the only one that will be connecting to the backend 
fetching data and rehydrating or you know, re rendering components on your page. So for this particular scenario, yes, you still can take advantage of Gatsby for rendering most of the markup, but only what it's live, what you should be like fetch it live or client side can be done with a, with a React, I mean, with this, I mean, particular component who connect client side to the API or the backend. So again, and that's the beauty of React because you, I mean, and Gatsby because you can take advantage of the React life cycle. Right. So this is kind of a, this is kind of a, oh, I forget the word, but where, you know, the front and back end can in effect run the same code because you're running React, you know, to generate the site. Um, and you would pre-generate like for SEO purposes, you'd pre-generate all the like paginated results for each tag and each category, but not all the combinations of them for those you would use live view, live React code and uh, exactly. in a solver. Exactly. You can generate the pagination in all the pages by taxonomy, by terms, but any when, it, when at the moment you require using reaction to filtering search, you can do that. You can, there is, there is project like Lunar and, and that project allows you to store your data client side so you can fetch that one client side and that feels I mean, way more faster because you're not hitting a backend. But again, depending on the amount of data you have in your backend, right. it could be a good idea or a horrible idea. Right, right. I, I, I usually <laughs> tend to start from the assumption that at some point, at some point the data set will reach the horrible point, Although, but sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> that, that, thank you for digging into that one. That was kind of my, my big what if about Gatsby. So again, again, so it's, you can, yeah, the, the, the term, I mean, the name here is either hybrid application or isomorphic code that can run client side and server side. That was the word. Yes, isomorphic. you can do that. Mm Is that is so? Is everybody done? Hey, this is Byron again, you know, uh, moderator extraordinaire, I guess. Uh, just wanted to let everybody know this is a great question. Um, didn't know that you could put GraphQL into Airtable, that was kind of fun. Um, so I just wanted to remind everybody you can go back to uh, uh, whatever the go find your next session. They should start at uh, what's that? 9.50 or 10 o'clock or whatever. Um, but we're just about done here for this session. And so everybody, well, I guess I'm giving a round of applause for uh, Jesus in my head. But uh, feel free to leave the meeting, go find your other places to go. Um, or if you have any questions, you can get one last question for Jesus. Yeah, and I will be hanging around on, on the Slack channel. You can find me on Twitter or whatever. You know, feel free to ask me any questions. This is my Twitter handler, and this is my company Twitter handler as well. So feel free to ask any questions about this or either Drupal, WordPress, GraphQL, Gatsby, maybe React as well. Can you hear me? Clearly, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I am just I had a question in the chat, but um I your mic cut off at the last second. What was the name of the programs you mentioned? I know I heard yarn, but I didn't hear the other two. So yarn, it's the um it's kind of like NPM, but allows us to have like you know like multiple dependencies, multiple like projects and using something called workspaces. Theme UI is the uh, tool that allows us to it's a design system. It's the, uh, now it's called the design GraphQL framework. It is basically a library that allows you to to create interfaces and, and teamable components. That's and the other one we use a lot is the storybook. And the storybook allows us to you know show the uh, components we are working with our clients before any. I mean we we don't, we don't even have to build you know the uh, the Gatsby side. We just of those React components, we can build this style guide and we can share with our clients so they can I mean, take a look at the how the site is going to look like and without the need for us to either having a back end or, or even the, the front end build, you know, the React project build.
in this case, the Galbi site. So Storybook is the other one. Storybook. And you definitely should use those tools. Those provide you with, a, I mean, a lot of I mean, benefits and your clients are gonna love those. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'll take share. I'll take <laughs> I'll take care of sharing my slide deck on the um, Slack channel, same as in Twitter and probably different places. So you can take a look at it. And again, again, I will be around in the Slack channel. I'm on Twitter. I'm pretty active on the Slack Drupal channel as well. So I mean, any questions about Cassidy Drupal kind of thing? Feel free to ping me. And thank you all for coming to the session and enjoy the rest of the day. And again, I invite you to my other session. I don't know, it's on the site already. It should be, and it's, uh, wow. No, talks. I just changed my keyboard and I, uh, yeah, it's this one, Drupal, GraphQL, views, and for government side. So again, this will be more a case study talking about how we migrate this D7 to D8, how we really take heavily advantage of views, view modes, and, and a lot of components from Drupal on a Gatsby site. And, I'll, and here I will talk about the, how we use views for client side search, you know, with Solar, and also how we use views for, for building like listing of pages on, on our Gatsby site, and that happens on the build time, the client side happens, client side, you know, it's interesting approach. So thank you all and bye.